morning. Good, Good morning. to see you guys today as we've gathered for our prayer meeting. As always, it's wonderful to, to gather together. Uh, grateful to be back. I uh, appreciate everyone uh, just carrying on. Hey, you don't need the pastor here to, to keep on uh, serving. So we enjoyed our vacation time out in Phoenix, but it is good to be back. Uh, let's begin with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for this time and this day. Thank you, Lord, for watching over us and bringing us back at the appointed time. Lord, I'm so grateful for your blessings as I was able to spend time with family in Phoenix and uh, get back safely. And Lord, just thank you for watching over our, our church body at the same time. And Lord, we just uh, continue to lift up those that are in need of your encouragement, Lord, need of your comfort. And we'll be talking about that some a little bit later. But Father, in these moments right now, we just want to set aside whatever distractions may be calling for our attention and focus upon you and your word. So Father, we praise you. Lord, we love you. We pray all this in Jesus' precious name. God's people said, Amen. 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 So we're, we're going to be in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So if you want to be turning there, uh, you can. We'll be talking about the body of Christ. But I want, did want to highlight a couple of announcements and prayer concerns, things to continue to be aware of. Obviously, continue to pray for Ukraine. Uh, continue to lift up that whole situation. Uh, it's kind of like it's just it's still there, you know. And it's kind of like what's the how's it going to resolve itself? We still don't know. Uh, but we just pray for God's word to go forth at a time like this. So uh, you can give if you want to see um, the gospel go forward and uh, with refugees. Uh, so you can give to send relief. Also, during the Annie Armstrong Easter offering, uh, we're continuing to do that. Encourage you to give generously to the Annie Armstrong so that we can uh, see church planning take place. See, we can see uh, needs being met here in North America uh, and beyond. Also coming up, we have our friend to friend. Uh, that's going to be this coming Saturday. And so uh, there's been information in the bulletin about that. But if you want to participate in that, see Darlene Phillips. But also, more importantly, just be in prayer. Uh, just pray for each person that comes that they would uh, hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Easter is coming up. Uh, just around the corner, really. Easter is Sunday, April 17th, but we're doing a free Bible giveaway on that uh, Good Friday, which is April 15th. Uh, then we're also doing an Easter egg hunt on the 16th. And so if you want to contribute candy or plastic eggs or bows, we, we need those so that we can give those out. Again, the gospel is going to go forward uh, both of those times. And then, again, Easter Sunday, it's always a special time. I encourage you to invite people to come. Invite a friend, a neighbor, a co-worker, somebody, family member. Uh, they're more likely to come on a Sunday like that. And we'll be obviously talk about Jesus and the power of the resurrection. So as we look here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I uh, wanted to introduce this whole concept of but the scripture talks about the fact that the church, that we as believers in Jesus Christ, we are the body of Christ. Uh, as we get into the letter of Ephesians on our sermon series, uh, in fact, we'll begin in a new sermon uh, series this Sunday. It's about the, the body of Christ. Uh, the letter to Paul wrote to the Ephesians addresses this concept on several occasions in that letter. But I wanted to kind of introduce it here uh, this morning. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Verses uh, uh, beginning in verse 12, we're going to see this principle, this picture that helps us comprehend who we are in Christ and what Christ has done for us. But before I begin this, how many of you guys really want your bodies to function properly? Does everybody? I think that's a that's a hundred percent. We we all want our bodies to function properly. But as I get older. My body doesn't do like it used to do. I can give you a verified way that I can verify this. When I was young, the basketball goal at my school was at 10 feet. And guess what? Basketball goals are still at 10 feet. You know, it's March Madness right now. And in my younger days, I could get this far above the rim. I could jump, and I could get my hand that far above. If my hand were bigger, I could palm a basketball, but it wasn't. But I could palm a volleyball, and I could dunk a volleyball. 
How high do you think I could jump right now? Mm -hmm. The goal has not, it, yeah, it, it's, y'all are being generous back here. Some said that high, no, I don't even know. I mean, what, what changed? The, the goal did not change, you know, it's still at 10 foot. Uh, but something has happened to my body, right? It doesn't function as it once did. So yes, we want our bodies to function properly. We, we certainly do because then life goes easier. So Paul is going to point out here that we as the believers in Jesus Christ, when we are saved, we are what? Baptized by one spirit, what? Into the body of Christ. He uses this analogy of the human body to explain what the church is, to explain who we are in Christ. So keep that in mind as we think about and we read this passage here, that this is a picture showing us who we are in Christ and how we are what? to function in this world and how we're to function in the church. So uh, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12, he says, For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. So Paul is highlighting here the equality between Jews and Gentiles. If you go back and read the first Corinthians, you're going to find that there's been some divisions within the church. And you have some people who are saying they were more super spiritual. They're more important to the church because they have more knowledge. And their knowledge is, they're, they're becoming puffed up. They're becoming arrogant about it. And Paul's reminded, no, 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 no. We are all one in Christ. There's one body. But guess what? In that body, there are what? Many members. We, we are individuals, individually part of the body of Christ, but there is only one body. And so therefore, no one person is superior to another person. So as what? By one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. So this baptism by the Holy Spirit is what? Into Christ. It's not some second blessing that you get in, any, in order to be more spiritual. It's when you become a believer, when you put your faith and trust in Christ, you are what? Baptized by the Spirit into the body of Christ. This spiritual entity, not like anything else in the world. And so we are part of his body. We are members of it and individually so. It says, for in fact, the body is not one member, but many. Now just think about your earthly bodies. How many bones are in a human body, I forget the exact number, but it's like over 200. 25, I think. Larry, maybe somebody would know that. So yeah. there's a precise number of bones and they're not exactly the same, right? Now maybe you have like on your left hand and your right hand, similar bones, but they aren't the same, right? They are different, they are individual, they are unique, but it's what, attached to one person, one body, and so we as individual believers in Christ are baptized what, into the body of Christ. And there's not many bodies, it's just one, but there's one body, but many parts, many members. He says, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? So he's just being, you know, just painting a ridiculous picture, the foot, if a foot could speak and say, well, I'm not part of you guys, I'm my own, well, what's a foot by itself? It's nothing. It can't do anything. It has to, what, be attached to the body. He says, and if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body, just as he pleased. Again, he's painting this, this kind of ridiculous picture. What if we were just one eye? What if we were just an eye? I mean, that's, that's like a cartoon picture. What if we were just a nose? Just a nose, you know? I mean, that's one, one picture for that. He says, that's ridiculous. We're all one members of the body says but verse 18 but now God has set the members each one of them in the body just as he pleased 
And so think about that. If you as an individual person, you as an individual member of the body of Christ, God has placed you in his body as he pleased. That's why not everyone in the body of Christ has the same spiritual gifts. We all have a spiritual gift, at least one. The moment of your salvation, you receive a spiritual gift. And God has placed you in the body to use that spiritual gift to bring glory to him, to, to build up. Just as an earthly body needs the foot, needs a hand, needs an eye, needs a nose, uh, he said, I've placed those for their specific purpose. A foot has a specific purpose. A hand has a specific purpose. An eye has a specific purpose. The nose has a specific purpose. And he says, in the same way, God has placed each of us in his body for a specific purpose and for his glory. And so we're not just all, not everyone is just an eye. If everybody had the same spiritual gifts, think how, how lopsided that would be, you know? How just grotesque, in a sense, that would look uh, just if it was just all eyes and just all nose. Ugh, that, that's not a pleasant picture to think about. But God has set the members, verse 18, each one of them in the body just as he pleased. He says, and if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor, and on our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. So he's pointing out here, you know, there's the different parts of the body. We need to make sure that we there's no schism between the body, that everything is working properly together because if it doesn't work properly together, what happens? It, it impacts the whole body. And you guys know this to be true. You get a splinter in your finger. That's the hand. So how, how does that impact the nose? How does that impact the ear? How does that impact the eyes and all those things? Well, maybe not directly, but does it not impact, impact the whole body? Because what are you thinking about? That splinter. <laughs> You're thinking about, man, that hurts. And if it festers, oh, it's, it's even worse than that. And in fact, when something impacts the body in one area, it can impact the whole. I remember being in, in high school, and I remember going to the beach, step, stepped on a sand spur or whatever you call those things, and boy, it hurt. I mean... You, you ever done that? You know, stepped on something like that? It's like, whoo, just stuck in there. Knocked it off, go about my business. Well, there was a little piece still stuck in it. And I want you to know that little thing, after a while, it began to get infected. It was bothering me. And I remember I woke up one morning, and from the bottom of my foot going up my leg was a red line. Ooh. Like infected. So, of course, my older brother comes in. Oh, man. That could get to your heart, you could die. Like, thanks, Bill. I appreciate it. Really making me feel much better about this. So, of course, what? Now what? Go to the doctor. And that was my foot. But you know what? If it didn't take care of that, what would it have done? It could have. I mean, he wouldn't. That's true. I mean, your whole body could get infected, right? And it could impact everything. Unfortunately, you know, they dug it out and cleaned it up, antibiotics and all that kind of stuff. So. You know, I'm, obviously it didn't get to my heart. I didn't die. I'm still here. So praise the Lord for that. Yeah, Lord. But the point is, what can impact one small little thing in one part of the body can infect the whole body. Mm -hmm. We understand this in our earthly, physical body. But isn't it the same in the spiritual body? Someone could sit over here and say, well, just because, you know, 
I've got my sin and my secret sin and nobody else knows about my sin, it won't impact anybody else. That's a lie from the devil because you're part of the body of Christ. And if you're hurting, if you're in sin, guess what? It will impact people around you. And if you're hurting and you have, uh, or maybe uh, something has happened that has discouraged you in the faith, something has happened that has caused you to question your faith, can it not infect other people? We, we need to, to deal with those things. Cannot uh, disagreements between brother and sister in Christ? Maybe it's just over here. It's not impacting anybody else. Oh, no, no. <laughs> It'll impact the whole body. So Paul is making us, the whole point is here, we're connected to one another because of Christ. And we can't sit there and say, well, what I do doesn't impact anybody else. Yes, it does. And therefore, we need to take seriously what he's told us to do and how to live and how to be. We are the, the body of Christ. Think about this. When Jesus was here on earth, he was able to walk around and see people and touch people, and people were healed. Many times he used touch to do that, did he not? He used touch to, to bring healing to individuals. Well, now Jesus has ascended to the Father, and he is no longer here himself in person in that sense to walk around physically and touch people and to minister to people. To, to be present with them. But isn't Jesus present here on earth now? Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. It's called his church, the body of Christ. In many ways, we are his hands and feet. You've heard it said before. I mean, like when we're sending missionaries to go to Ukraine or to help with the refugees in that crisis, we send them. It's a human being who was going, but if they go in the name of Jesus, who are they doing this on behalf of? Jesus himself. And Jesus told the apostle Paul, who was Saul at the time, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who was Saul persecuting? He was persecuting believers. He was persecuting sure. people who were what? The body of Christ. And Jesus <coughs> said, the point that you are persecuting me. So we as believers in Jesus Christ need to understand how we are connected to one another. Now God has placed each of us in his body for his specific purpose, for his glory. And we must uh, understand that what we do impacts the whole body. He says in verse 26, and if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. So just think about this. You have been individually placed in the body of Christ. He has given you a unique gift, a gift for you to use for his glory. That gift is either a, a speaking gift or a serving gift. A speaking gift in the sense of teaching, uh, proclaiming the glory of Jesus, or a serving gift in the, what meeting needs of those around you and using uh, the resources and the things that God has placed at your disposal to build up the body of Christ. So use the gift that God has given. Build up his body. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you at this time. And Lord, we thank you for your precious word. Thank you that, Lord, you have placed us in the body of Christ by your Holy Spirit. That, Lord, you have gifted us for service. You have gifted us to, to be used for your kingdom's sake and for your glory. Lord, we lift up in our congregation right now, Lord, those that need a healing touch from you. And just pray that, Lord, you would bless and strengthen and encourage them. Lord, we continue to pray for uh, Herman's family. Lord, as he uh, passed away and have his funeral service tomorrow, his celebration of life service tomorrow. Lord, we just lift up the family. We lift up that service that, Lord, you be honored and, and glorified. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you would intervene in the situation in the Ukraine. Lord, as only you can do, that, Lord, you would bring peace, that, Lord, the hostilities would cease, that, Lord, the Russian uh, 
aggressive aggressors and the Russian army would retreat, that, Lord, you would send peace at this time. Father, I just pray for our congregation, that, Lord, you sustain us and, and strengthen us. Lord, to know that we are your body, we are your representatives here in this neighborhood, in this community, in this state, and in the world. Father, I thank you, and I praise you for your love and your mercy. And I pray all this in Jesus' precious name. God's people say Amen. Amen. Well, I again appreciate you guys being here today. For those that have tuned in, I appreciate that as well. Let's say our vision verse, and we'll conclude this time. Declare his glory among the nations. We get to do this. God bless you.